great design begins with a great idea. It blends form and function to solve a problem. In manufacturing, design is limited by tools and technique, but the tools are changing and the only limit is imagination. Additive manufacturing has the potential to, to truly revolutionize manufacturing. And an important aspect is the ability now to capture the manufacturing process in a digital environment. The best analogy I have is Minecraft, right? Where kids will play for hours putting little blocks in the right thing to create, a, create this integrated structure. We can do that with this technology. Additive manufacturing is the industry term for what you probably know as 3D printing machines that use polymers or metal to build something one layer at a time. Penn State's Applied Research Lab, or ARL, is home to some of the most precise equipment on the market. With additive manufacturing, you have the, the machine doesn't care whether you're, you're building a solid block or you're building a very, very thin wall structure. And so if you think about it, we could go 70 to 100 microns, basically about half of a human hair. We could build a wall that thick now out of metal. And detail like that is changing some very basic assumptions. One of the biggest things we see is challenging designers to think differently. I mean, we, I joke, you know, well, why are holes circular? Well, it's because that's how we're used to drilling them. They don't need to be anymore, right? And just, they still, you can just sort of see their minds start to explode when they're like, what? I don't have to have a circular hole? Uh, and so things like that, which is really just, just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to additive. These machines haven't broken the mold, they've replaced it. You're watching what's called directed energy deposition, it's just one of the machines at ARL's SIMP 3D facility. Basically how it works is there's four copper nozzles down at the bottom of this cone um, that feeds powder out in all directions, and then a laser comes down through the center of this portion, and then any time the laser's on, the powder's underneath it, the, the material will fuse into place. It's like welding, with uncanny accuracy. The machines can create new objects and repair old ones. It can even use multiple materials on a single build. Metals like titanium, stainless steel, aluminum, and nickel alloys. Powder bed fusion is a different approach. They actually take a vat of powder and they will scrape a small layer on the order of 20 to 60 microns across uh, your building plane, and then the laser will solidify that layer. The layers are so fine, complicated builds can take days, but the precision is appealing. One aspect that we're deeply involved with and, and have several actually ongoing programs is the application of the technology for sustainment of military systems. For the military, additive manufacturing could mean parts on demand, saving time and money by keeping aging equipment in service longer. But there's a catch. A lot of the standards and protocols that we use for uh, you know, measuring the powder, the process, making sure it's re repeatable and re reproducible, isn't out there for additive yet. Before a part can go into service, the results need to be predictable, and that means extensive testing. Qualifying a flight critical component for the Department of Defense can take years. Researchers want to know how the powder performs and if it can be reused. The machines are continually tested for consistency. The parts undergo even more scrutiny. They're tested for strength and fatigue and examined layer by layer for anomalies but the attention to detail has led to a critical success. The Applied Research Lab partnered with Naval Air Systems Command, or NAVAIR, to make this flight possible. This is a historic moment. The Navy's first manned flight with a critical component created through the additive manufacturing process. It's a titanium link and fitting, small enough to fit in your hand. One of four identical parts that helps hold an engine to the wing of V-22 Osprey. The piece was wired during the flight, letting engineers measure performance in real time. This was just a demonstration, the first step towards formal certification, but the Navy has already identified six additional safety critical parts they plan to test over the next year. A clear signal the military is planning on a future with additive manufacturing. I think it's on the rise, but there's a lot of like bumps to get through first. It is very expensive, so people think that we're gonna be additively manufacturing everything when that's not actually the case. We're gonna be picking the things that would be best additively manufactured to like lower the cost of them. Bottom line, don't expect a 3D printer like this in every home, at least not yet. Sure, 20 years, this is gonna be pretty mainstream. I think even within the next three to five years, you're gonna start seeing it uh, sort of more, used more frequently. I, I sort of joke, nobody wants to be first, but then nobody wants to be last either. <laughs>